In today's video, I've got three transitions that I'll show you how to create from scratch in Premiere Pro with no plugins, starting with a beginner transition, followed by an intermediate one, and finally an advanced transition. Now, as always, a special thanks to Motion Elements for sponsoring today's video, but let's get started and jump right into Premiere Pro. So here we are in Premiere Pro, and I'll show you what we're gonna make first. Now, before you click off, this is as basic as it's gonna get today, so make sure to stick around for the advanced transition at the end of the video. To start, we already have our two clips in our Premiere timeline. For this first transition, it helps to have an object like this diamond here that can be isolated and scaled up to cover our entire frame, allowing the transition to take place. So I'm going to duplicate the second clip here, right click it and select replace with After Effects composition. Once that clip opens up in After Effects, simply double click it and then select the Roto Brush tool. Then we just wanna start painting over our diamond like so to get a nice roto selection. I'll then quickly select the refine edge tool and in a similar manner, use it to paint around the edge of the diamond. Then just hit freeze and let After Effects work its magic to remove the background. Then we can just export it with a transparent background by adding it to the render queue and selecting lossless with alpha from this preset menu here. Now back in Premiere Pro, we can delete this dynamic link here and toss our rotoscope diamond onto our timeline above where our two clips connect and cut it down so it's about 10 frames long. Now apply the transform effect to it, set the shutter angle to 180 for some natural motion blur and scale it up until we can cover the entire frame like this. Now we just want it to move from the left of the frame and exit all the way out to the right. So we'll just add some position keyframes to do this over about 10 frames. You can further tweak the velocity of the transition by opening this drop down menu for our position and ramping your speed graphs like so. Now the effect is almost there, but what I like to do lastly is duplicate the isolated diamond a few more times and randomize the scale and offset the transition movement a bit. So there are a few more flying diamonds involved in our transition like this. Finally, I typically like to add some sort of flash transition or film burn on top of everything and set the blending mode to screen. And now we have a transition that looks like this. Up next, we have our intermediate transition that looks like this. So with our two clips back to back in our timeline, let's duplicate the second clip and move it over to the left about 10 frames before adding a frame hold. Now on that top clip, we'll use our opacity pen tool to mask the bottom half of the frame like this. Next, just duplicate that masked frame hold and under the mask settings, hit invert. Now we essentially have our original clip split into two sections. Now move four to five frames to the right and trim that top clip. Next, nest both frame holds individually by right clicking and selecting nest. From there, we can search for the transform effect, apply it to both clips and set both shutter angle settings to 180. From the start of our bottom frame hold, move forward five frames and set a position keyframe. Then go back to the start of the clip and adjust the position so it starts off frame at the bottom. Make sure to easy ease your keyframes like this and open up our speed graph to ramp the effect even more. Now repeat this same step with the top frame hold, but animate it to start from the top of the frame this time. Make sure to cut both clips off right where the raw footage starts so the transition plays seamlessly into our raw footage. Finally, we can add an adjustment layer above our transition and add a bit of camera shake onto everything using the transform tool and maybe a film burn to tie everything together to give us a transition that looks like this. Now, before we move on to our third and final advanced transition, if you're looking for some pre-built transitions that you don't have to waste time on, let me tell you about today's sponsor. All right, so check this out. As a video editor, I'm constantly looking for high quality assets that I can grab at a moment's notice. All right, yes, you caught me, this is an ad, but seriously, stay with me for a second because this could actually benefit you. Instead of creating everything I need from scratch, I can just head over to motionelements.com and find pretty much any asset I'll ever need. They have over 14 million free and paid digital stock assets from videos, Premiere and After Effects templates, royalty-free music, sound effects, and so much more. Imagine it being 2024 and you're still wasting time creating a texting conversation from scratch when you could have just downloaded one from Motion Elements. Editing is only getting more streamlined, so if you don't wanna fall behind, then check out motionelements.com and use code JustinSaran9 for 70% off your first month when you sign up for an unlimited subscription plan and gain unlimited access to over 14 million stock elements. All right, so finally we have our advanced transition that looks like this. So if we break the transition down frame by frame, we can see that it's seamlessly transitioning from the first shot and moving down through this sort of cloudy sky here and right into the second clip perfectly. So with our two clips in our timeline, we'll move 20 frames forward from where they meet and make a cut on our second clip. Now drag your first clip up a layer and stretch it out until it meets the cut we just made and then make another at the start of the transition as well. Drag the first clip back down and then nest the two middle clips together. 
Now open up that nest and under sequence, open the sequence settings. We then want to add asterisk six to the end of the 1080 here, which is telling Premiere to make the height of our sequence 1080 times six, which is 6480. Now take your top clip and adjust the position so it's at the very top of our new sequence and our secondary clip reposition it to be at the very bottom. From there, we're gonna export this first frame as a TIFF file by hitting this little camera icon here and then open it up in Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, we can use our rectangle marquee tool to select the empty space between our two frames and hit generative fill, add a text prompt or don't, and then hit generate. This is gonna use AI generative fill to seamlessly blend the two frames together for our transition. If we wanna add any custom AI elements, just use the lasso tool to select the section and repeat the text prompt steps to add whatever else you need. Finally, save that newly generated frame as a TIFF file and back in Premiere, we can place it below our two separate frames in our nested sequence. Now back in our main sequence, add the transform effect to the nested transition section, set the shutter angle to 180, and finally keyframe the position of our nest to go from the first clip and quickly pan down to our second clip, creating a seamless transition between the two clips. Finally, I'll ease the position keyframes in and out and use the speed graph to ramp the motion as needed to get a final effect that looks like this. Now, please remember video transitions are great for adding flow and style to your videos, but not every cut needs one. Use them strategically to enhance your edits, not distract from them. And with that being said, YouTube thinks you'll like this video here, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.